Yeah, so I got, um, when Sid was like four years old and I was 13 at the time, uh, I was the young philosopher and she was the youngest and the best philosopher I knew at four years old. And uh, as we grew up together, I went and became the professional philosopher teaching at a few universities. And, uh, Sid went in her direction doing extraordinary things. She has quite the, quite the background in various areas. Uh, and ultimately finishing off in communications you know, with her PhD in, in rhetoric. They said, well, what's that got to do with what she's doing? Well, in that 50 years or so that we've been, well, longer than 50 years that we've been talking and so forth, she's developed uh, this, uh, this simple explanation of absolutely everything. Uh, now, people have done that before. They've tried doing, I mean, dance, how many are familiar with the dancing movie masters taking the quantum leap? Old books like that to try to bring quantum mechanics in with metaphysics. You know, that, that's that sort of common thing that people have done. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, he's a, her brother. She's done it better than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, so we, as I say, we continue our connection with each other. Uh, she's, she's amazing, as you'll, you'll discover in the little time that you have. And she's developed an extraordinary model here. Now, part of it's simple explanation of absolutely everything. I mean, part of that's tongue in cheek, right? I don't, we, we, you know, there's always going to be a mystery in the universe, but we can open some of those doors. Uh, and here she is, here I am, and she still is. I mean, I've known some really great philosophers in my time. Uh, she still is simply the best philosopher I've ever known. <laughs> Yeah. Billy was Angela Davis's TA at UCLA in the philosophy department back in the day, so <laughs> he's got some street cred in the philosophy department. All right, so thanks for coming. It's really great to see you all here. Yes, it, w it seemed like a funny idea to call my philosophy a simple explanation of absolutely everything. Uh, but it is indeed a TOE. It's what's called a theory of everything. And I am going to try to do something absolutely impossible. It's going to be like magic today because I decided to be completely unreasonable and try to cover the entire thing in this hour. So I'm going to give you the whirlwind tour of cosmology, math, physics, uh, the Tao, uh, Paramahansa and SRF all in this one ounce hour and show you that everything works together, that it's all compatible and it all starts with a donut. Yes, as crazy as that sounds, for some reason, I didn't invent this thing, I'm merely describing, I merely noticed a few years ago that you can express just about every dynamic of this 3D universe we live in through this toroidal shape. This happens to be a slinky that I realized only about a year ago, if you pull a slinky in a circle, it makes the donut. After working with this thing for 30 years, I found it. <laughs> Before that, I was using things like fruit. I made breakfast chef. We recently had bread and breakfast, bed and breakfast up in Ashland, and I work with a lot of fruit. And I noticed, do you see what I see? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same donut, it's the same model. Chapter four of my book, which only has four chapters, and it's only 87 pages long, so, and it's copiously illustrated. Chapter four shows you many examples of the torus in our 3D universe, because I am making the crazy claim that uh, this is the basic shape of the universe. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's <laughs> ridiculous, but there it is, okay. I call this the primordial fractal, so part of today's explanation. There's only four points we're going to cover. This is the whole simple explanation. My 60 years worth of philosophy, and I have read all manner of religious um, doctrines and dogmas. I've been, uh, uh, I am myself a uh, spirit-filled Christian. Um, uh, I follow the Tao. I've gone through SRF's uh, courses and indoctrination. So I, I understand a whole lot of these various modalities, plus my PhD is in the rhetoric of science and medicine. So what I do, I read science and I read medicine as the literature. So I read everybody's science. 
and they read all kinds of medicine, whereas a chemist just reads chemistry, and a cosmologist usually only reads cosmology, and a string theorist is paying a lot of attention to string theory. I read everybody's stuff. That's what I do. And I have seen some patterns, and one of the patterns I see is this crazy thing. Okay, does this remind anybody of anything good? Name some things in nature you can think of. That This is the cross-section. This is the cross-section of the donut, right? Can you think of anything that's shaped like this? Looks like a fly's head to me. Yeah. With the eyes. <laughs> guys? Okay. Not really desert. An alien. Yeah. What else? Can go out of the way. Well, it's a, um, do you know that red blood cells are shaped like this? Platelets are shaped like this. Chlorophyll is shaped like this. Here's the Van Allen radiation belt around the Earth. Here's the Earth cloud around our solar system. But here's the dark matter cloud around our solar system that they have recently discovered in just the last two years. So part of my simple explanation, I've been making scientific predictions for the last five years, and everything's unfolding very nicely. And I love when I read the science magazine and they go, scientists are puzzled as to how it could possibly be true that if all of our cells do turn over every three years, how's the information going forward? Or if, if, you know, not only do the cells turn over, but the molecular, the molecules turn over. And, you know, the quantum field is instantaneously blinking all the time. How is everything holding the information? How can you possibly go forward when everything in you is renewing at the instantaneous scale? Where is the information housed? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So uh, I was delighted this week to read in uh, Science News that scientists are now puzzled because they don't understand why, how it is that you can have this phenomenon called convergence where a, a leaf over here on, a, on a, a, a bit of yeast looks exactly like this macro-sized fern over here and it looks exactly like the gills on this ancient fish. In other words, many different types of um, basic patterns are replicated throughout history, throughout evolution, throughout various kinds of phyla. Uh, and I'm saying the information is all carried by this donut. So let's get back to the model. Enough digressions. Here's the four simple principles. That's all you have to know. One, fractal units of consciousness. And I will explain to you very simply about fractals. That's what the broccoli is for. <laughs> Hierarchically arranged aggregates of like matter. Those are very difficult words. Hierarchically just means in a pyramid with all, you know, all the peons down below and the big guy at the top. That's what a hierarchy is. And you all recognize hierarchies. That's governments and organizations are hierarchical in general. Uh, aggregates just means things stuck together. In this room right now, we are an aggregate of humans. I would call us an aggregate of units of consciousness. And we are focused on one thing, just as if we were a donut. Okay, that's just <laughs> All right, that's it. Stay with me. It's going to keep coming around, and then at one point you're going to go, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, now I see what you're saying. All right, so, so that's one part of the theory, and I'll go into that. The next part of the theory, this business that I call toroidal dynamics, I think I maybe invented the word toroidal. Uh, so if you ever see it out there, that was me. <laughs> when, I, when I started publishing my blog uh, five years ago, I couldn't find pictures of the donut out there uh, on the Google Images search. So I, I started populating Google Images with donuts. And you can go out there now, go look, at, go look for Taurus on Google Images, and you'll see things like this. <laughs> and you will know where it came from. OK, so toroidal <laughs> dynamics. The torus is the word. This is a mathematical, this is a mathematical shape, the way a sphere is a shape, or the way a cube is a shape. This is the shape, the donut. It's called a torus. And uh, there are many things implied by that shape itself, mathematically. It's a very cool shape. It's related to a figure eight. It's related to the infinity sign. You know, 
Oh, by the way, do you see what I see? Do you see that there's a donut inside this donut? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that's a way that donuts nest. That is one kind of way that you can fractally set one donut inside another. And that was an accident. It just so happens if you set two slinkies on top of each other, they will want to nest and it will fall into itself. Without, I have now done this many times, so that's a fun experiment. Okay, toroidal dynamics and all that that implies. Number three, what I call the simple golden rule. And there it is. I boiled down all the world's religions and um, all ethical and moral principles and physics and cosmology and chemistry and anything else you can think of down into this, this, these two sentences. And, th and this is how it all holds together. It's the job of all units of consciousness to reach out to others, like we're humans, so we reach out to other people or we take care of the dogs and whatnot. Okay? Reach out to others with, with love. Okay, good, and that's sweet. Aid or assistance. Yeah, right. And information for the betterment of all or to build the next level up. This makes all units of consciousness happy. This is what makes things happy. So this is why at the human level, people who are selfish or egoic or me-centered, who don't know to reach out to others with love, aid, or information, they're unhappy, miserable people often. Would you agree with me, or is that unfair? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So uh, it turns out it works that way with molecules, too, and with atoms, and with elements, and with cells. Everything, think about it, holds hands with others just like itself to work together on a common purpose. And you just happen to be leveling the next level up. Subatomic particles reach out to other subatomic particles and become atoms. Atoms in their particular ways reach out to other atoms and become molecules. Molecules reach out to other molecules in their various chemical ways and become elements. Elements begin to aggregate and become minerals. And once we got minerals all in the universe, now we've got amino acids floating through space. And they come to the Earth and they found that water and because the comets or whatever. And... Uh, <laughs> Now they're happy because, see, everybody held hands to get here. All right. Is it just awful hot in here with the door closed, right? It or is hot. Need? It's hot. Yeah, there's no air in here. <laughs> hot in here. <laughs> hot. <laughs> Unhappy. No. <laughs> well, that could be too. Uh, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Let me see what I can do with that. Oh, good. Pause. Time out. <laughs> well, well, it's pausing. Just thank you. Now you guys will be frozen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that is the Wow, great. We only closed it because of some noise. So shut it halfway, maybe. <laughs> It'll, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. It's going to pull up fast yes. even if we close it? Yes. Is it yes. Yeah, I feel that already. Like, I usually bring my blanket. <laughs> okay, so back to where we were. Okay, so that's the simple golden rule. Do you see what I'm saying? That the entire universe is held together by things on the same scale working together to a common purpose, and they just happen to fractally level the next level up. It's the same rule over and over and over and over. I've never noticed anybody saying that before. All right, now that I know. So, uh, and this is why I think things do work. I, this is why your skin cells hold together and you are walking around inside that skin because they're happy to be working with the other skin cells, making skin. <laughs> what do they want to go fall apart, kill you for? They're doing their job. <laughs> Okay, so of course, the, what is love, aid, and information? It's different for different levels. Humans know a lot more than a uh, carbon atom. I will give you that. On a certain level, they do, but on a certain level, the carbon atoms actually know quite a bit more. But we'll get to that. All right, so that is the simple golden rule, 
working together, we could call it. And number four is my Rob's patented simple model of memes. This hasn't shown up anywhere yet. So. <coughs> You've heard of memes. Do you know what a meme is? Yes. yes. It's a short fragment of thought. I am kind of, um, I'm, I'm broadening the uh, definition of meme to be more along with what Plato used to call the forms. I think everything that can be conceived in the mind of men, so to speak, is a meme. So in my book, I spend a whole chapter on memes. So you know, anything you can think of, the stuff of thought are memes. They're a tiny meme, pretty key. <laughs> tiny meme. That makes you feel happy as part of its meaning. So memes aren't just definitions or connotations, denotations, and all that. It's anything it brings to mind to you. And your definition of a meme doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine. If I say cup, OK, picture a cup. Well, I'm sure we all have our own favorite mug in mind or a particular kind of cup. Your cup might be some big thing. Somebody else's cup might be a little hammered uh, thing, whatever the cup is. Everybody's cup is different, but it's still cup. It's cupness. So that meme is cup. So you see what I'm saying? There are certain memes that all human societies hold in common. Uh, um, what are called those universal human values. So things like justice, uh, motherhood, respect, betrayal, honesty, lying. Everybody knows what this means. It's in our DNA, so to speak. These are all memes. Each one's a meme. You get a big, giant, complex memes like America. Well, that's, I think of that as a giant chord. So memes can be singular notes. Happy kitty. It could be a little more complex, uh, like cup. It could be really complex, like liberty or truth. Or it could be something so completely out of control, like America. That is obviously just gigantic sets of memes. That's how I think of it, OK? Big piles of stuff. OK, so one, two, three, four. What time is it? 20 after. 20 after, OK. And I'm a little bit fast. Yeah, all right. I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to lose you. But I think you're all with me so far. So far. All right, let's go. <laughs> fractal units of consciousness hierarchically arranged. OK, here's a beautiful fractal. I never realized broccoli has so many levels. OK, so you, we have this stalk of broccoli here. Now, you realize that this was on a mother plant, right? So this is already one iteration, I call it, off of that mother plant. There was some big old broccoli plant. She had a lot of these guys on it, right? So this is one of those. Okay, so that's already, this is already a second iteration. Okay, here's a third iteration. You see, it's a fractal because it's the same thing. It's just one layer down, one set smaller. Trees are all fractals. The, the branches of trees are little trees, and the mother tree is the mother tree, right? So, so there's a third iteration of a fractal. And this is a formula, it's a math. Fractal mathematics. If uh, someone in here was a fractal mathematician, uh, they can actually write a formula to describe this broccoli. And this is a recent field of math. It's only from, I think, 1979. So is this the fifth iteration? You see, it looks just like that, looks just like that, looks just like that. And then there was the big mother plant. So was that the fourth or fifth? Fourth. Four. Four. All right, so here is the fifth. And it's truly there. Feel free to handle the broccoli after the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> and look at they're still going. That was the fifth. OK. Here's the sixth fractal iteration of the broccoli. She's this small, but you can see it's the stick. It's the broccoli. And I can see with my eyes that there is, this is not a solid ball, but it is a flowery type of thing like this. So, by the way, this is how gecko feet work. I, I read a lot of science. Did I say that? Okay. Gecko feet look like this at, at the molecular level. They just keep fractally branching, branching, branching their skin cells down so small that they, their electrons bond with the electrons of the wall. And that's how they go up the wall. Isn't that neat? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all right, so that's your fractals. We got that. You all understand fractals. So I'm suggesting that our universe is like this broccoli in that 
Here is our Mama Broccoli, as ludicrous as that may be. I'm calling it the primordial fractal because it was there first. Now, before the primordial fractal, can we get there yet? Huh, yeah, all right, we can. Before the primordial fractal, what, what existed before our universe? How is that even possible to think? Because you know that time is connected to space, right? So before there was space, if there was a Big Bang, then uh, there was a time before the Big Bang. So if there was a Big Bang, time and space began at that same moment. So what was just before the Big Bang? I'm suggesting that the ground state of everything is consciousness. Most scientists believe that consciousness is a byproduct of the human gray matter. You've heard something like this, right? You know. Consciousness, uh, well, that's why they can mistreat the rats, because they can't be conscious. They're just rats. Or, you know, right? Yeah. Okay, so they think that consciousness doesn't begin until you uh, have a neocortex, frontal, prefrontal lobes and whatnot. I think they've got it completely backwards. I'm suggesting that the ground state of nothingness is consciousness. It's that Buddha no thought. It's the mind of God, if you want to call it that. I mean, it is that big and old, but there's no thoughts. Because you can't have any sort of division in emptiness, right? You know the Buddha mind? Do any of you meditate? You're trying to get back, you're trying to establish the no thought. So that is the no thought. It's kind of God's mind between thoughts, so to speak. And then I really think that one somewhere along the line, God had this thought. Oh, by the way, you don't have to be a Christian or a religious person or even believe in God to believe in a simple explanation of absolutely everything. I'm calling it God because I happen to be that religious kind of person. But